put it to the cloud. There we go. Okay, it's recording. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, we uh, this this PowerPoint presentation was presented as a 2008 uh, annual at the judges workshop. I went through and, and corrected just a couple of slides uh, and then uh, uh, updated the PowerPoint with a little bit of color because it was only in, in white. So, uh, uh, and anyway, Isabel is signed on and uh, Isabel will, if you have questions, she'll be the best person for you to uh, ask those questions. Uh, so just as a general description, the ragdoll is a very laid back cat and has no extreme features. They are medium to large. They are moderately long haired, what we normally refer to as semi long haired. Uh, and they're a blue eyed pointed cat, okay? They are slow uh, to mature. Uh, they reach uh, full coat and color uh, at the uh, age of three years. So this is a, just a couple of photos of bicolor ragdolls and you can see their, uh, that inverted V on the face is very, very striking. Uh, so the ragdoll is an affectionate cat. It's a very smart cat. It gives the impression of grace when it moves. It has uh, uh, the feeling of subdued power and again, uh, the very striking appearance. So the uh, point markings may be covered by a range of white overlay patterns. Now the color point by necessity has no white, uh, but the white uh, does appear on the mitted and the bicolor and the van bicolor. And uh, we don't have a van in that photo. So, so we'll go on to the, to the point structure. The, this is really a structure-based breed. Uh, if you uh, separate out the, the structure versus coat color and condition, it's very heavily weighted on the structure of the cat. So the head's a, it's a large modified wedge, but it is equal lateral in shape. The eyes are large, vivid ovals. Uh, the ears are medium, they're wide set, they're moderately flared, uh, and they follow the line of the wedge. It's important to remember the wider the wedge, the wider the flare. Uh, the profile is slightly <laughs> curving, uh, but the nose is straight and the chin is strong. And as within most of our breeds, the nose and the chin should be in, in alignment. So here's a, a photo of the broad modified wedge showing the equal lateral triangular shape of the head. And it's uh, measured uh, by the outside uh, uh, edges of the ear down to the tip of the chin. And the cheek should be in line uh, with the wedge. And uh, as in most of our male cats, uh, we'll have jowling. So we need to make allowance allows for the jowling. And also there's a flat plane between the ears. So uh, that, uh, that to me, it used to be really, really emphasized about the, the flat plane on top of the head. Uh, some of the cats I've seen over the years uh, are a little bit more rounded than they used to be. But uh, occasionally we'll see one that has that nice flat plane on top of the head. It's very striking uh, to the structure of the head. Uh, we'll move on to the eyes and the ears. The eyes, uh, they're large, uh, they're vivid blue ovals, they're wide set, and they're moderately slanted to complement the wedge, okay? The ears are medium sized, they're wide set, they're moderately flared, and like I said before, they continue the line of the wedge. Uh, wide at the base, rounded tips, and they are tilted forward. Uh, and there's a slight curve in the profile, uh, it ends in a medium length nose, it is straight. Uh, the chin is well developed, it's strong. Uh, it's in line with the upper lip and the nose. And the neck is very heavy and it's very strong. This is a, a large, well substantially built breed. So now we'll move on to the body, which is 30 points. Uh, the body is large, long, it's broad, it's solid and it's heavily boned. The body itself is rectangular in shape. Now you, you need to understand, we're not talking about a rectangle profile as we see in the Maine Coon. We're just talking about the body itself uh, that's rectangular. Because as you'll see here on the, 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 hang on a minute, let me get back here. 
uh, the hind legs are longer than the front. So it's not a rectangular profile, it's a rectangular body. And the legs are heavily boned, they're moderately long, uh, and the, like I said, the hind legs are longer uh, than the front legs. So it's large, it's long, it's broad, it's solid, and it's heavily boned. It's rectangular in shape, it has a full chest, and there are uh, it's the length across the shoulders and the width across the hips is the same. The body is firm, it's very muscular, but it's not fat. So they can have a, a moderate stomach pad on the lower abdomen, that is acceptable uh, in their standard. The females may be smaller than the males, so it's a standard that's actually written for the male cat. Uh, and we allow for slow maturation in young adults. So legs, paws, and tail. The legs are heavily boned, they're moderately long, and the hind legs are longer than the front legs. Uh, the paws are uh, proportionately large, they're round, and they have the feather tufting. Uh, the tail is long and it has a full plume. Now, if anybody has any questions, Ann, you can stop and we can talk about any of the points uh, that we're covering. Uh, Carol? Over the structure, yes. Sorry to interrupt, but there's some people waiting to be let in. Oh, is there? Okay, okay. I got to find how to do it because I got this full. Oh, here are the participants. Admit, admit, admit. Okay. All right, I'll slide that over here so I can sort of keep an eye on that. And thank you for letting me know that. Does anybody have any questions on what we covered so far? <clears throat> Nothing? Okay. Well, we'll move on to the next. Sure, please. So we'll, we'll talk about the coat. Uh, this is a semi-long hair breed. They have abundant guard hairs and a very minimal woolly undercoat. There's 20 points but just on the coat. And then the collar, uh, the body and the points is 10 points. And you need to understand uh, uh, for the 10 points in collar, uh, that's divided five for the white markings and symmetry and five for the body and the point color. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So they have a naturally non-matting, moderately long fur. Uh, it's characterized, as I said before, by abundant guard hairs with a minimal undercoat. And uh, the coat is gonna flow with the body. We prefer a rough. This cat's got a beautiful, beautiful rough uh, that you can see here. Uh, it can, the, the coat can be shorter in whole cats. And then we allow for seasonal, seasonal variation. So in the summertime, they're going to shed some of the coat like all of our cats do. Carol? Yep. We've, I have a request for you to go into more detail about the difference in rectangularity of the Maine Coon versus the Reg. Okay. So in, in, the, in, the, in the main coon, the hind legs and the front legs are the same length from the floor. So when you look at the profile of the body, you take into account uh, the legs and the, the spine, and, and that should be a long rectangular appearance. So I'm, I'm talking about the profile of the body, uh, including the legs, okay? Uh, when we talk about the ragdoll, the hind legs are longer than the front. And wh when I have a student, I always, what I do is I, I put my right hand in the flank of the cat and the left hand under the front uh, legs of the cat. And as I set the cat down on the table, the back leg should hit the table before the front legs do. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. like, it's like a two-step. Back legs hit <laughs> and then you lower the front and it hits. That way I know that the back legs are longer than the front legs, okay? Uh, but the actual body, the thorax, the abdomen, the flank uh, is, is a rectangular 
just the body. Take the legs out of the equation and just look at, at the body. The body should be rectangular in shape. Is that, uh, Isabel, uh, am I explaining that correctly? Yes, that's very good. Thank you, Daryl. Okay, all right. Does, does that uh, explain, uh, explain uh, for the person who had the question? It, to me it does, it wasn't my question though. Okay. Okay, we'll talk just a, a little bit about penalties. Okay, so if they have a thick undercoat that causes the hair uh, or the coat to stand off from the body, that, that's a penalization. So if we have a cobby low set body, that's a penalty. A short tail uh, with a non-directional lump on the tail. Remember the non-directional is a penalty. Small or round eyes are a penalty. A Roman nose, we don't want that because that's what we see in the Burman. And then we'll go over the disqualifications. You can see this kitten has crossed eyes, so uh, that's going to be a, a panel or a, a DQ. So uh, we don't want a nose break. We just want a slight curve. Uh, any body or point color, and other than those listed, and then uh, eye color other than blue. It's a remember it's a pointed cat, so pointed cats need blue eyes. And then uh, the various <coughs> disqualifications uh, are a directional kink in the tail. So a non-directional is a penalty. A directional kink in the mm -hmm. tail is a disqualification. Uh, crossed eyes, and our cats should have uh, five toes in front and four behind. So if they've got extra toes, that's a Daryl? Yes. Daryl, if I may, um, it may sound funny to talk about extra toes. Uh, usually polydactylism is very evident in cats. With rag dolls, uh, what happens is sometimes we have dew claws in the back leg. So this is something that you may want to keep an eye out for. Uh, or occasionally they'll have an extra uh, dew claw on the back leg. They don't stick out there close to the leg, like the front paws, basically. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, that's good to know. That's, uh, that's information that uh, I was unaware of. So thanks for sharing that, Isabel. So we'll, we'll go into the color. So uh, now this, this breed uh, does not recognize uh, the cinnamon gene. So we're gonna have seals and blues and chocolates and lilacs and uh, red and the dilution cream. So- Carol? Yes? Sorry, I keep having to do this. Uh, Question asking, what is a directional versus a non-directional tail fault or kink? Well, uh, non-directional would be, you would be going down the tail and let's say you get to the end and there is an exaggerated roundness at the tip. Okay, yeah, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say a lump versus a, a kink. It's actually, a, it's, it's a, basically a lump. Uh, right. It's something that, that I've seen in Abby's uh, where they, hang on, let me admit, Pam DeGoya. <clears throat> uh, so you get, uh, uh, they're, they're, you, you, as you go down and you feel this uh, uh, abnormality, uh, your, your finger and thumb are not going to change direction uh, as you complete your sweep, uh, the sweep down the tail. Whereas uh, a directional would be an actual kink. You'd be coming okay. down, you hit uh, an angle, and then the you, you'll see your your finger and thumb change direction. So as you uh, go through where the kink is, Daryl, if I can add to that, um, often what we see in rag dolls is what we typically call a nervous kink. So if the cat is relaxed, it may go unnoticed. But if you stand it on its back legs, like you're supporting the front legs, uh, usually there'll be a little bit more of tension, uh, I guess, in the nerves. Um, uh, or the ligaments of the tail, and you'll see the last vertebrae will uh, sort of go to one side. So it's, you really, when you have to go over the tail, you go over in both directions. And ideally when the cat is, uh, like I said, the rear end is on the table and the front end is supported to somehow. Okay, so, so just so I understand you correctly, Isabel, you're saying it's okay to check the direction uh, of a, a, a potential nervous kink with the cat on its hind legs only. 
Yes, that's when you'll, you'll notice it uh, the most. Because okay. otherwise, if the cat is relaxed, uh, especially on a young kitten, it goes unnoticed. So if you're, okay. you know, if you're so looking for it, just go over it okay. twice in both directions. Yeah, if I can extrapolate what you're saying, you're saying we should put the cat on all fours so it's comfortable and then check the, the uh, tail why it's uh, more in a more relaxed state on all four legs. Well, if you if you want to find the kink, the cat will have to be on its hind legs with the front end supported. Sometimes it, it's more obvious, especially in an older cat. You'll notice it even if it's relaxed. But uh, on young kittens, that's the, the best way to see if it has one or not is when the, only the hind legs are on the table. Okay. I, th I think most of us, uh, if we feel something like that, we're going to check it when the cat, maybe back when you get the cat back in the cage, uh, where it's more in a relaxed state. Uh, then uh, that's usually what I do is I'll, I'll check if I, if I have, I always give the benefit of the doubt to the cat. Okay. Uh, just because I think it has a, a kink, I'm not going to disqualify it. If there's a question in my mind, whether it's a kink or just an abnormality, depending on what the breed standards call for, but we're talking about mm -hmm. rag dolls. So uh, that, that, uh, okay. that non-directional non uh, tail fault or abnormality is a penalty in this breed. So, two more yes. questions. Yes, is color on the chin in a mitted a DQ? We'll get yes, it is. We'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, and Thank then you. there's something of a trend to extremely vivid eyes that seem to draw your attention to that as the first thing you see. Is that a good feature or a bad feature? I'll let Isabel answer that. <laughs> Are, are you saying that the eyes are too dark and it attracts the attention? Is that what you're saying? I'm not, I didn't say it, but I, that was, that's how I would interpret the question. Well, it's not a bad thing. Uh, however, um, you know, the eye color is only worth a few points. So, you know, okay. I can understand why it's pleasing, but it's just one of those things that there's only so many points to it. I have seen uh, cats that have eye color that is so dark that you don't see the pupil. Um, that's something that I find uh, not right. Um, the eye should be a vivid blue. It shouldn't be, uh, you know, purple blue. So okay. uh, it actually gives the cat a mean look, and this is not something that we want to portray in the rag dolls. No, thank you. So I went back in the slides to bring up uh, this mitted cat. Uh, and I, I don't know if, if you guys remember, but bef before we took uh, color points and mitteds, uh, the Berman people didn't want uh, the mitted rag dolls accepted. And so I remember on uh, uh, one of the lists, they had a cat uh, sitting just like this. And one was a Berman and one was a mitted rag doll. And, uh, and the person was a Berman breeder. And they said, can you tell which one is a, a rag doll and which one is a Berman? Well, of course you can because the white chin. Bermans have to have a colored chin. Rag dolls need a white chin. And as I said, we'll go over it. It's a disqualification. And we've got a, 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 a chart uh, uh, coming up shortly that is gonna show uh, the white distribution uh, on top and bottom view of, of a mitted rag doll. And you'll see that this white actually extends from the top of the head through the chin down through the body. Okay, so does that answer the question about? Uh... <clears throat> it must, I don't see anything new in the chat box. Okay. All right, so uh, here we have uh, the, the four different colors, okay? We have a, a color point, a metted, as you can see. There's the gloves on the front and then the white chin. Here we have a bicolor, and on the far right is a van. So there are six uh, color point colors, that, and I think I mentioned that a little previously, which is seal blue, chocolate, uh, lilac, red and cream. And so the blue, lilac and cream are the diluted colors of seal, chocolate and uh, red. Uh, the points may be uh, solid pointed, they could be links pointed, or they could be party colored, or they can also be torty links colored. Those are also accepted uh, color patterns. Uh, 
and then all ragdolls are pointed, uh, but points may be partially overlaid with white in some patterns. So is there any question uh, on the distribution of white? We have netted, bicolor, and van. And, uh, and Isabel may want to touch up on uh, um, the, uh, what, what's referred to as high white netted. Uh, because high white methods are going to look like bicolors, and I'm not sure that's uh, a, a judging issue. So, Isabel, you want to address that for everybody? Yeah, there's um, actually it's a genetic term that's more useful to breeders than in judging. Uh, there's what we call a true bicolor, and there's the high mitted. Uh, basically, it's the genetic makeup uh, of the white spotting factor. The high mitted will have. Uh, Isabel, uh, hang, hang, hang on a minute. Whoever's uh, TV is or radio is playing in the back, can you mute, mute yourself? If, if you're not a speaker, you should be muted. I'm in a noisy background too, so maybe me. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Okay, so the high mitted basically is homozygous for the white spotting gene, but it's a different level. If um, if that particular allele would be heterozygous, the cat would be emitted. But when you combine on those two mitted genes, the cat uh, has a phenotype of a bicolor. Well, as the true bicolor um, has a higher level of white, so the, this cat is heterozygous for the white spotting gene, but at a higher level. So the phenotype is, is just like a bicolor, and you can't tell them apart from looking at them. That's not the point, but they will breed differently. And so the van uh, is homozygous for this true bicolor gene, so for this higher level of white that we find in ragdolls. So the, the van will have just the color on the top of the head, maybe a spot or two on the body, and then the long uh, along the tail. So uh, Isabel, has, has the, the white color, because the, the white and pie ball spotting uh, is a, a mutation in the kit genes. Have, have they discovered that where, where the mutation that causes white ragdolls? I looked all over the internet to find them. I can't hear you very well. Uh, I hear the music now. Uh, but yes, uh, no, they haven't located the, the genes. They know it's the different gene in the Berman, but as far as I know, they don't know. Um, they can have not been identified, able to identify the gene for the different level. All right, thank you. This is Kathy. If you have to go, you can mute whoever that is. Yeah, I think it's Oscar. He's not muted in no. that Spanish. Oscar, can you mute? I think you might have to mute everyone. All right, I just muted everybody. So, and yeah, you can unmute yourself. So, very good. Okay, thank you. All right, so uh, we're going to go into the colors. Uh, even shuttle, subtle shading is permissible, uh, but clear color is uh, preferred. Uh, and uh, as as we all know uh, from. Uh, dealing with Siamese over the years, as they age, their, their uh, body color is gonna darken and we have the, the same issue because this is a pointed gene also. And we all know that the pointed gene is a heat sensitive gene. And as cats age, they don't put out as much body heat as they do when they're younger. So here we have a slide uh, with uh, uh, four different uh, body colors. You can see blue eyes and all these cats. Uh, uh, it's a very, very striking appearance. There's a couple more. And remember that the white inverted V should not go outside uh, uh, of the outer edge of the eye. Okay, it needs to be within the confines of the uh, outer canthus on both eyes. Okay, so points, the, the mask, the ears, the legs, the feet, the tail, they're very uh, densely colored and clearly defined. Uh, 
there should be no ticking in the points. And uh, that's another thing. Uh, sometimes when kittens uh, uh, get sick and have a fever, their mask will sometimes tick out. And the uh, stomach pad may be uh, darker in shading. And that's just in the minute of the color point patterns. And this is a slide I was telling you about <coughs> uh, where the, the, the top view is uh, the top row of slides and you can see that there's uh, in the inverted V white and then white on all four legs. In the middle, we got uh, that they, can, uh, they are allowed to have collar uh, on their forehead and nose. Uh, white on the front is uh, to the mittens and then uh, white uh, should be uh, up to the hock, but uh, not above the mid thigh, okay? And then of course, uh, the pointed, uh, color pointed pattern, we all understand as they have mass, uh, tail and leg uh, are fully covered. And the underside view is the same thing. And this is, uh, I was telling you about uh, the mitted, where it starts at the chin, and goes down through the body and then to the back legs. So uh, uh, anyway, that's uh, the distribution of the white uh, on the method. And then the underside of the bicolor and the bands uh, are going to be uh, all white underneath here. So is there any questions on that slide? Um, I have a question that says, white is allowed on the shoulder of the bicolor. Is it also allowed on the method? No, it's not. No. Okay. The, on the on the shoulder of the bike color, what happens is sometimes they have a white collar that goes around their head, like at the back of their head. It must not cover the ear area, but it can go. Uh, they have a saddle, so the dark area on the body on the back. But they sometimes have a white collar that goes around. But the mitted should not have any of that. No. Okay. Thank you. But this is really a a, a great slide, and. Uh, and, and as you can see, this was uh, developed by the British Ragdoll Cat Club back in 1997. So uh, very informative, uh, full of some good information here. So uh, white inverted V, and, and like I said before, it should uh, be within the outer edges of the eye. It should not, that inverted V should not extend beyond the uh, outer uh, campus of each eye. And this cat uh, fits for almost uh, dead center of the eye. Uh, we prefer symmetry. We want the inverted V to be very symmetrical. Uh, and as in the Isabel just answered, there can be some white uh, on the upper body in the band and bicolor patterns. But the band, of course, won't have much color on it. Uh, the legs and feet are all white. Uh, but may uh, may show some dark spots. And uh, when I judge a ragdoll, I always, uh, the front legs are pretty easy to check. You just have to lift the cat up and look on both sides uh, for the back legs uh, to make sure that there's, uh, you know, occasionally you'll see uh, the, uh, uh, whatever the color of the cat is spot on those back legs. So it's okay as long as it's not over a big portion of the area. Okay. And here we have, uh, you can see on this top cat, uh, very, very low color markings. This is all, uh, I mean, this is almost like a, a, a mitten that's uh, uh, not, not fully extended to, to create the bicolor pattern. And very little uh, inverted V here on the face. And, uh, and then the bottom picture, uh, the only thing I see with that is the eyes are very small. So but we're talking about the bicolor pattern faults. Isabel, you want to point out what is wrong with this cat? Is it the white on the ear here? That's the uh, issue. Are we talking about the, uh, the bicolor on the bottom? Yes. We're talking, yeah, about, the, we're, we're talking about pattern faults on bicolor cats here. Yes, it's the white on the ear. Uh, that's the problem. Okay. Especially right. when it comes all the way up to the inside like that. Sometimes you'll see you know, I like a little curl, but if it doesn't go up 
to cover the ear or, or the uh, the pinna area, then it's fine. But if it covers the, the pinna, that's one of the BQs. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you for uh, clarifying that. Uh, and can you talk a little bit about uh, this? Uh, it, this is really a lack of an inverted V. It's almost like an hourglass that you'd see in a, uh, in a midden. Yes, um, the midid that we have above there um, is basically a mist mark because on the midid pattern, uh, first of all, you want to have a pigmented uh, nose and um, you want to have the white chin. Sometimes they'll have a blaze on the face, but uh, the nose has to be colored and you don't want any of that white to go uh, just under the nose. Um, and so this, this uh, the top cat is basically a, a neither nor because it, you know, the the pattern on the face would be acceptable for a bicolor, but it has too much color on its legs. So this is why it's basically a, a fault. It's not a it's sort of what we call a mitted bicolor, but those are not an accepted pattern in ragdolls. Okay, thank you for explaining that. So it's a DQ if there's an absence of the inverted V uh, uh, or has dark, dark spotting uh, in the uh, white color of the inverted V and then as I mentioned before, extensive coloring uh, on any of the legs is a, a, a fault. And here's the band pattern. And as you can see, there's very, very little shading in the body. And uh, the color is basically limited to the tail and uh, the, the ears on the top of the head. just covered those things. And uh, so it's a penalty if there's more than 20% uh, color on the body. And uh, absence of point color on the top of the head or the tail uh, is a disqualification. Do you want to expound on that, uh, Isabel? Or is that you think it's pretty inclusive? Well, basically, we don't want an all-white cat, and uh, the color on the head, as you know, is uh, sort of important for the hearing of the cat. So this, that's why it's important to us for the cat to have color on the head. Okay. Now we'll go into the midded pattern, and uh, they may have a white blaze in the shape of a star, a diamond, an hourglass, uh, or lying in one patch or broken. There, it's uh, usually central as it is in this cat. And like I said before, if you draw a line down through the center of the head uh, in the uh, meta, that's usually where you're going to see the white. Uh, and and this, is, is, this is very bearable. Uh, there could be no white at all to uh, a, a very nicely shaped hourglass that I've witnessed in the past that are beautiful. Uh, pay attention to the white chin, okay? and then the mittens on the front feet. The chin must be white and extend into the white belly stripe. So if you'll recall the slide we had with the, the view of the uh, uh, white distribution on the underside of the mitten, that white started at the chin and extended all the way through the body, spread out uh, into the flank area and into the back legs. And here we have some uh, different methods. Uh, so here we have a seal point method and it looks like a 40 point method. And I don't know if that's supposed to be a lynx point or just a, maybe a chocolate point. And- Carol? Uh, yeah. Question is, is deafness a problem in this breed? Isabel? You're muted. Isabel, you're muted. There you go. Sorry, I missed the question. Are, is deafness a problem in the breed? Um, it could be a problem in the all white cats. Uh, and so basically uh, with ragdoll, it's kind of a, a fine tuning of controlling that white spotting factor. We sort of don't want it to run away or, or to cover the whole cat up. Uh, because yes, in all white cats, you can have deafness like in any breed. Okay. So Isabel, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, uh, in, in your breeding programs, you're not going to breed a van to a van. Is that correct? Uh, not typically, uh, but if, the, um, if you're working with the right alleles, you shouldn't have any problems. But, um, you know, sometimes people have 
anyway, it's, there's sometimes there's other alleles that may be there. So yes, we do try to breed like a color point to a van or, uh, you know, we, we control uh, the patterns. That's why we need all three patterns in our breeding program, basically. Yes. Okay. And what if white is on the upper muzzle of a minute? It's not ideal. Uh, you know, the, like we see that in this picture here with the cat with the hourglass blaze. Um, but uh, it's not a disqualification per se. It's, it's just not desirable. But it gives a more pleasing look when it's just the hourglass and there's no uh, white uh, underneath the nose. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is a... So white mittens present on uh, both front feet. They should be evenly matched. Preferably, they go all the way around into the wrist uh, joint. Uh, white boots in the back. So they, as I said, the white should extend at least up to the hock uh, and now no higher than mid thigh. Okay, and here we are. It's a disqualification if they lack a white chin. So, uh, you know, as you approach the cage uh, before you take it out to, to, to judge the cat, yeah, I mean, you're going to look at the cat, see where the ear placement is, the eye aperture, eye collar, and, and all you have to do is just continue down and look and make sure that if you're, uh, if you know you're pulling on a mitted cat, you need to understand that that cat needs to have a white chin. If that chin is colored, then that's a disqualification. And here we have the color point pattern, okay? So uh, these, these can be uh, the solid point colors, links point, torty points, and torty links points. So allow shading in older cats, uh, but there needs to be a, a definite contrast between the uh, body color and the point color. And it's a DQ for any locket or white spot anywhere on the cat's body, including the toes and the tail tip. So just check those things out. And that's the end of the slide presentation. So uh, we'll open it up for questions. And uh, uh, thank you, Isabel, for attending. Uh, it was an honor for me to present the, the slides that you guys put together. and. Uh, Anyway, it's uh, the, I don't think the breed standard has changed at all that much. Uh, as no, that's, not, that's right. It hasn't changed. But thank you, Daryl. You did a wonderful job. Well, thank you. Uh, so uh, let's open it up. And I know people have some questions. And uh, uh, Isabel's the expert. I remember when we uh, first uh, accepted the ragdolls, I judged to show up in Canada. And uh, I had talked uh, with Isabel on the phone. Uh, but I'd never met her in person. And uh, that was our first meeting. I don't know if you remember that, Isabel. I remember it like it was yesterday because at that show, uh, Isabel showed Denver Blue uh, as a kitten and it was my best kitten in show. And, and uh, we hadn't uh, had uh, the rag dolls recognized for very long at all at that point in time. But uh, as most of you know, I judged in ACFA before I come to CFA and uh, we recognized uh, ragdolls there. And uh, so I was, I was thrilled uh, that uh, Isabel brought that beautiful cat. And uh, uh, he's always been in the back of my mind when I'm judging ragdolls because to me, he, he had no faults that I could find. So uh, absolutely stunning cat. So, and we got questions that people want. Of them. What about a white tail tip and a bicolor? It's perfectly fine. Okay. Actually, uh, the white tail tip is uh, sort of a heritage from the very first rag doll called Daddy Warbucks. And uh, if anything, it was a, a very ex uh, desirable trait and it was something that the, the original breeder uh, sold for a lot more money when they had that white tail tip. So we see it often in the middest, but we'll see it in the bicolor as well. Okay. Do breeders see a lot of Miss Marks kittens? Um, I guess 
Some breeders do more than others. It depends how well over the generations you've controlled your white. Uh, if you start playing around with too many different levels of white, it gets a little more difficult to control it. But usually, um, you know, I've been breeding for a long time, but I get it pretty consistently. But occasionally we'll get lack of symmetry or you'll have some spotting on the back leg. Or um, I guess with the generations, you get to be more and more picky about your kittens and what you keep for breeding. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I don't see anything. Well, thank you all for attending. Um, I, these, I've gotten a lot of positive comments about the ability to do this rather than sit for three or four hours in a room at the annual. So this might be something we decide we, we want to continue forever. Um, and we will still continue to have the breed council secretaries present the breeds that we vote on each year as long as they're willing to do it or otherwise they can delegate to a judge that they would like to present it. Um, and again, we're, we will go ahead with trying to plan some monthly ones and we will be asking for volunteers to either do that or to work with their breed council secretary to do it together. And I just want to add, and I think that uh, doing these individual breed uh, presentations for 45 minutes to an hour uh, uh, really it, it uh, suits our needs, uh, and it also ke keeps people sort of occupied uh, for right. at least an hour. And uh, when we get into three hours, people lose interest after a couple of hours. Yeah, you, your brain just overflows, and yeah. you're tired of sitting, and it's a combination of things. But I do think this is maybe a better way to do it. Yeah, I think this is good because, you know, if there's questions about a certain aspect, you can always, you know, you know, downsize your presentation here, go back and click on a slide. I, I right. think the slide was uh, sort of toward the end and I just uh, backspaced until I got to it because I think, I think this is a, a really important slide that everybody uh, should sort of imprint on their brain about the, the color patterns uh, uh, in the ragdoll. So it's uh, important. Uh, yes. And as Daryl pointed out, this one was uh, writ was uh, drawn by the British uh, Ragdoll Club, but it's actually used with within all the different associations. So uh, basically, the standard is is the same for all the other associations as well. Uh, it's just that this uh, this slide was done before the vans were uh, understood and, and more recognized. So that's why they're excluded in this slide. Hopefully, it'll be added in the near future. Okay. All right. Good. Yes, Marilee. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I had a question I was trying to form here in my brain. So I've seen some ragdolls that have a very long coat, and I have some that have very short coats. And uh, I hear various judges say, oh, no, I could never final that one. It has too short of a coat or way too long of a coat. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, if I can answer, basically, um, we were looking for a medium length uh, coat. We don't want something that's down to the floor. Uh, what happens, of course, there's some artificial selection for the fluffy kittens, uh, and they are very stunning when they have all that hair, but that's not the correct uh, ragdoll coat. Uh, as for the shorter, shorter version, of course, breeding cats will have shorter coat. Um, if they're kept at uh, environmental conditions, uh, when it's warm in the summer, they'll have a shorter coat in the summer and a longer one in the winter, but they should not have any undercoat. So uh, basically a correct ragdoll coat is very silky, no woolly undercoat, and it should not uh, be a poofy cat. Okay. Daryl, um, we've been asked if you can get a copy of that pattern slide. Is it possible for you to, to send me that and I can send it out with certificates or put it on the judges list? Well, if, if you don't mind, people can just screenshot it. I mean, we can, uh, uh, I can do a screenshot and send you a JPEG of it. Okay. Uh, that you can share. I actually did a screenshot. Let me make sure it's clear. But so I can send that one out after I trim it up because I'm sure it's not. Yeah. By any means. No, I, I know we don't want people to uh, screenshot these things that we're presenting uh, and use them over. Uh, I, I occasionally will, when I'm watching a lecture on something that's very important, this is really detailed. And uh, you can't put that slide up just, you know, for uh, a minute 
and right. absorb everything that's in the slide because there are so much uh, to look at here. So uh, uh, the, if you can screenshot that, mine has a glare. So if you can screenshot and send it to me, I'll send it out. Okay, good deal. I'll do that. So uh, I, I think probably uh, Isabel, it, I, it would be okay to do that. I don't think that uh, uh, I, I I had permission at the time from the British Ragdoll Club to use it and uh, back way before we used Zoom, uh, there was actually a printed uh, handout I was giving when I did the original presentation. So I had permission for that. I'm sure this is fine too. Okay. Thank good. you very much. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. So, okay. Uh, any, any other questions before we uh, had our way and finish out our days? I don't see any. All right, well, I'll stop the recording.